Hello. My name is Major Ron Hathaway, United States Marine Corps retired. I will be hosting today for the Armed Forces Heritage Museum of New Jersey. Today, my guest is Charlie Ehrman. Yes, good morning. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, tell me about yourself. Well, my name is Charlie Wood Ehrman, and uh, I am just a, a civilian who uh, has decided at one point in my, my uh, philanthropy career to support um, the Gold Star Mothers uh, by way of uh, building a veterans memorial in Mount Olive, New Jersey, which is in a very large 360-acre um, park of sports, and it's got soccer fields and football fields and all this, but it doesn't really have anything for uh, all generations um, and to 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 uh, learn about the the great rich haired uh, I'm sorry the, the the rich history of the United States of America mm. and so um, I was raising my two children in Mount Olive and my son who started uh, becoming eligible for his Eagle Scout uh, was discussing different uh, uh, options or ideas for his Eagle Scout project and since we were on the the front end of the global war on terror I had suggested perhaps we should do something in honor of those who serve but I would say specifically uh, for the the parents who have lost uh, their children serving this country so we started working on it and we decided to do uh, a a veterans memorial, a small, a small veterans memorial, and at that time, Mount Olive had a historical, a larger historical monument that they needed relocated. So they had reached out to me and said, "Why don't we blend the two projects together?" Which was a perfect marriage. So we did that. Uh, we started designing the complex uh, with the the memorial there or the uh, Mount Olive monument in the heart of the All Veterans Memorial. So while we were uh, designing the complex, we wanted something that could be expanded upon because the township had provided us 1.3 acres. So at, uh, being next to a, a sports complex, my son thought it was wise to maybe plant Norwegian spruces to act as a sound barrier. And then he did fundraising for the uh, the American flagpole, and he also created a formal flag burning vault that would retire the American flag. Mm -hmm. So then here comes the design. How do we how do we bring all of this in to to sim to symbolize our nation? So what we did is on the, the basic footprint of the All Veterans Memorial, because those who serve and protect our country deserves absolutely the utmost respect from our nation we decided to design the footprint in the, the, uh, um, the Medal of Honor. So when you're in an airplane looking down, you can actually look at something like, uh, it, it appears as if a, somebody gave the, the world, or the United States, a large Medal of Honor. <laughs> and so what we did is we, we took all the, the wonderful things about America, like the five branches of service, we did the path to enduring freedom, which denotes all of the different wars that we have experienced through our country's history. We also have a preamble uh, staging area that uh, honors and denotes all of the U.S. presidents from uh, George Washington all the way to Barack Obama. Um, and we're, we're going to be putting, I'm sorry, D Donald Trump, and then of course we'll be adding uh, uh, President Biden. All of the aspects of the All Veterans Memorial is all privately funded by, by private citizens and organizations and companies who wanted to join us in a way of, of showing our appreciation. So 100% of the All Veterans Memorial is paid for, designed, and built by all volunteers and private donations. So once we finished the first phase of the All Veterans Memorial, uh, it piqued a lot of interest and we, it just kept growing. We ended up uh, putting in a warrior obelisk that uh, 
represents the four consequences of war. Mm -hmm. We put in a spiritual cenotaph, which is an actual cenotaph that entombs all of the Bibles and, and books of authorities and spiritual papers of all religions, of all of our men and women who served. Mm -hmm. And it's entombed into a vault, and it's got the American flag um, over it. Uh, the, we added a liberty wall that denotes the first 10 Bill of Rights, uh, amendments of the Bill of Rights that was ratified uh, in Congress. And uh, we just have an, an array. And our newest addition has been the POW MIA PTSD Remembrance Wall, mm -hmm. which, of course, this week we will be uh, remembering and, and, and uh, citing all of the names of the men and women who were POW MIA from New Jersey. So it's a beautiful, beautiful ceremony. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's kind of that in a nutshell, and it has absolutely turned out to be amazing. And I have to say, it was absolutely inspired by God because mm -hmm. some of the things that just just kind of appeared in my brain, we put it on mm -hmm. paper, and it seemed to be a perfect fit. And I was almost remiss uh, not to mention our War Dog Memorial. We have five different wars in five different theaters with five different breeds of dogs with five different, in five different um, uh, missions. And then we also, uh, last fall, we added Blueskin. That was George Washington's um, horse that, that rode him to the Delaware Water Gap. And so <laughs> all of these are identical size, uh, characteristics and everything of these actual uh, heroes. Mm -hmm. So we've tried to pay attention to the details at the All Veterans Memorial. So we were kind mm -hmm. of proud of that. Yeah, super. Yeah. Well, what was your affiliation with the uh, Gold Star Mothers in well, regards to their monuments? We had built for the Gold Star Mothers a beautiful seating area. Um, they, you first enter onto the Liberty Walkway, and as you entered into the, uh, we call it the Gold Star seating area, mm -hmm. uh, we have a statue with the, um, the, uh, the folded flag, and it's, it, it says, on behalf of a grateful nation. Uh, so we started accumulating a lot of generals who wanted to know who specifically on Memorial Day they wanted an, an area where they could address these Gold Star mothers and and Gold Star families and, and widows of fallen warriors mm -hmm. and all. So we created this beautiful uh, complex for them to actually sit there and be together and to be acknowledged and for them to feel to feel that we are still a grateful nation. I think it's bigger than that, though. Um, since the first phase, once we started discussing the war and being a mom myself to a young man who is ready, actually, of age to join the military, which sure. he was. He, he uh, actually got pre-accepted to West Point and then decided to go into the junior, R R I'm sorry, the ROTC program, mm -hmm. Army. Um, no offense. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. None taken. <laughs> we need you all. We love you all. Sure. But um, uh, I was more sympathetic to the mothers, and I started doing, I, re I researched everything, the, the presidents and, and what was going on in their presidency, so I had accuracy in their quotes and, and everything else. But in the very beginning, I started looking at the, the young adults, which I would consider to the kids, mm -hmm. that we lost. And I think personally myself, um, I couldn't fathom the pain a mother must feel to lose her child. Because no matter how old we get, no matter how old sure. they get, there are children. And so what I did is, and this is, seems very strange, but you know, um, there are some people who are really, really supportive. Um, there are some people who aren't. There are, there are days where you feel like you're just on top of the world and you're victorious because people, they get it. You feel victory. You, they're, they're donating to sure. you. And then there are some people, you know, you have your bad days. So what I did is I had taken each one of these fallen warriors and I had built a very large, beautiful uh, 
collage of each one of them and a little story about them. And on those bad days, well, every morning I would start working on the All Veterans Memorial. And some days, you know, we, we all have good days and bad days, mm -hmm. but I, I saw them every day I worked on the All Veterans Memorial, whether it was soliciting for donations, designing. Mm -hmm. These young warriors right, were right before me at all times. I still have their photographs. Whenever we had Memorial Day services, we had POW, I would schlep my beautiful collage <laughs> and I would set them on the Global War on Terror Memorial Bridge. It's very beautiful that mm -hmm. I created for these young men. And then I started, uh, once we started completing our project, because these, their lives, and of course the mothers that I've never met, uh, they had continued to inspire me. I started meeting the mothers. And it was very emotional because I felt like I knew their child because I was with their child almost every day. So to see then the mothers, that was very emotional for me. Mm -hmm. um, but to go back just one step, um, my son being in eighth grade, uh, and being the Boy Scout and everything, mm -hmm. he was um, actually selected by his eighth grade um, student council or whatever to lay the wreath on one of New Jersey's fallen warriors in Washington, D.C., in Arlington Park. But they had to wait because he didn't have his headstone yet. Mm -hmm. And before he went on to Washington, D.C., he said, Mom, I don't know what to do. You know, I'm, I'm going to lay my wreath, but what do I do? What would be proper? Like, I would know. <laughs> and I said, you salute that man. He gave us his life. And so uh, that's exactly what he did. And the photographers happened to be there. He was with um, uh, Congressman Rodney Fruhlenhausen at the time. He saluted uh, Armour Burkhart. And so when he came home, uh, I started getting all the photographs from people who knew that that was my son mm -hmm. and that we were working on the All Veterans Memorial. And I said, my goodness, his wife has not even seen the headstone yet. Mm -hmm. And so um, I said to my son, we have to find her. I don't want her seeing this in the newspaper. We need to sure. let her know. Mm -hmm. So we did. Her name was Christy Burkhart, and we sent her the picture and Eric saluting and all, and it just meant absolutely the world to her. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up becoming friends, uh, her losing her husband, and now my son being married. It was the greatest gift of all because she came to my son's um, a, a engagement party, and she gave my son the champagne glasses that she wow. um, shared with her husband. So I've kind of had the privilege of walking through some of the daily mm -hmm. um, pains because I'm as I'm doing the different phases at, in the All Veterans Memorial, mm -hmm. oftentimes a Gold Star mother will come and they'll help me because they feel closer to the to their sons when they're when they're working because they know sure. that this was built in honor of each and every one of them to yeah. all the same and so oftentimes i would see them pulling up ready to work cuz they would <laughs> see my car there and they're like we saw you there so they would come in and they'd say what can we do sure. and they feel very close uh, our up and coming event the POW MIA which is a national vigil across the United States we host a vigil every year uh, they are taking a very active role in our events and they will be reading off the names of the men and women of New Jersey who did not return um, in honor of their at, at this point their sons mm -hmm. uh, they'll be doing this and I see the spirit I see how they they want to see their children continue to live and where we automatically say we will live through our children their children now and the memory of their children are living through them and I see that and it's such a strong powerful message when you meet these wonderful people mm -hmm. but it's almost painful too sure. because you look at them and you're like oh my goodness I'm so sorry and you just have to keep reminding them that we are a grateful nation and we appreciate their sacrifice sure. because it is a sacrifice for them in mm -hmm. my world <laughs> yeah do you have a very uh, various uh, veterans organizations assisting you uh, 
that get that you get information from in regards to these monuments and we do. Uh, we partnered with the um, Morris County American Legion and the New Jersey American Legion on some of the elements that they had. Um, we designed them and we build them, but then they give us some funding to actually pay for the materials. We also, um, last year when we had George Washington's uh, horse blue skin mm -hmm. they were that was sponsored by the daughters of the American Revolution Morristown uh, we had the rolling thunder uh, we have a uh, it's called the Ascension Bell and it's a POW MIA Ascension Bell mm -hmm. and they came and did the dedication and uh, their because POW MIA is their mission as well so we have various uh, uh, military organizations, retired and even still active. This year, uh, Picatinny has taken a very uh, active role in the events. So the more, the more the people like know of us, they want to participate in the events, which I think is very important. Mm -hmm. Well, super. Yeah. Well, tell me this. Um, how long have you been doing this? I have been doing this. Um, <laughs> Typically, I've been doing philanthropy now for 43 years. I'm a marketing and public relations specialist. Mm -hmm. So doing this is always in addition to, and it's a hobby. But I started off um, in 1979, and I've been, typically what I do is a five-year stint for different various things, if it's uh, working with animals, uh, shelters, uh, elderly, and all. And uh, specifically, this one has been 17 years. Mm -hmm. And not only do we, uh, do I build the, the Veterans Memorial, mm -hmm. but we also have an outreach division where thus far, uh, since the war, mm -hmm. we've provided 1,200 uh, care packages for the men and women overseas serving. Mm -hmm. uh, we also were an active organization that participated in the Iraqi bridging campaign with General Phillips. And then uh, every year, uh, beginning on Veterans Day, we start collecting for the homeless the homeless veterans, and the, the, uh, the mission is called Helping Homeless Heroes and Helping Homeless Hounds. And last year we had hit our 10,000 mark where we've provided severe weather uh, backpacks for the, the men and women who are homeless. Sure. So we have the American Legion actually goes out and they do the distribution. So on the civilian side of the house, we make sure that we get all of these supplies uh, identically packed, and then uh, the Morris County American Legion comes, they pick it up, and they actually boots on the ground, they distribute it, and then we typically have a uh, service, uh, uh, a veteran services member mm -hmm. going out there to see how we can further help them get off the streets. Mm -hmm. So we're very proud of that, and then Last year, because of COVID, we, we met our 10,000 mark. So what we did is we contacted all of the state homes uh, for the veterans, mm -hmm. and we gave them uh, blessing boxes, which had a lot of wonderful things in there. But that was a, a tremendous uh, success because we knew the devastation of what COVID did, and so we wanted to show them that they're really not alone. So we had taken some some proper steps to make sure. sure that everything was protected. And then we were also engaging with other organizations because they wanted, I, I see the, the, the need and the desire for people to want to participate. And COVID had kind of put a pause to that. And so our organization not only helped the men and women in the uh, state care facilities, but also the different organizations to get them out there and uh, feel kind of human again. Right. So sure. it was it was part of our outreach program that we had done last year, mm -hmm. and then um, this year I'm just really not sure. We're kind of waiting sure. to see what transpires here. Right. Well, I was talking to Cindy Melbo, oh, yeah. and she spoke very highly of you. Thank What's your you. relationship with her in regards to the? Well, she's Gold one of my, mothers. yeah, she's one of my dear Gold Star mothers. Yeah. Um, for Memorial Day, we we pretty much design our program around them, and so we present all of the period flags with all of the the junior mm -hmm. ROTC. They're mm -hmm. all in the period uniforms with the period right. flags, and then we always have a very special segment for them where they can actually continue to put the memorial wreaths down. So, you know, they set the memorial wreath so we, we keep them engaged. Mm -hmm. And uh, and 
she is the same one. I, I've got several uh, Gold Star mothers that rely on us <laughs> to uh, continue this, I, I would say, this, this eternal flame for their children. So mm -hmm. we kind of, whenever they come, we try to be there for them. Sure. Well, do you get donations from various organizations to uh, help your cause? We, um, we typically create a, either an element that mm -hmm. we're going to add to the, the All Veterans Memorial or a particular mission. And what we do is we would prefer to have them support by way of um, either sponsoring the monument and for this reason mm -hmm. is because when you come to the All Veterans Memorial, you will see the hundreds and hundreds of, well, the thousands of people because they put their service pavers in mm -hmm. and the hundreds of corporations and organizations that have either participated or sponsored elements. Mm -hmm. And that's important because when people come on the complex, they can see how well supported, but more importantly, when somebody who's lost somebody or even somebody who has served, mm -hmm. we get a lot of people who will just come to serve and they'll just kind of meander through and they, they see all of these different sponsors. It just basically reinsures them that we did this together mm -hmm. as a private organization because you know we the people are grateful sure. for their service mm -hmm. and so we've kind of done that kind of subliminally uh, and putting sponsorship names so when i have a monument i just say pay the um, i request that they just pay for the materials because we're going to bring in volunteers to build right. the same thing with um uh the the um our outreach programs we, we say this is what we need. And the reason for that, now we do take in financial donations, but uh, we deal, especially like in New Jersey, we have different levels of economics, you know. Mm -hmm. And when we reach out to the schools, you've got somebody who comes from a very well-to-do family who could probably donate a ton of stuff, or you have that one child who who can maybe go to the dollar store, but feeling like they're they're participating. So when we go to the different schools, we say, you know, if your class could bring in uh, the, the tissue paper, then we're able to show the children that they're all equal, they all bring in a box of tissue paper, mm -hmm. and that they're all participating, hoping that in the future that they'll remember these, these kindness, and then mm -hmm. they can also uh, grow into uh, philanthropy uh, supporters or philanthropists themselves. Mm -hmm. And we do the same thing when we um, send our items overseas. You know, we, we ask them for small items, they participate, it educates them on what's going on right now, the things that they need, uh, our helping homeless heroes. We let them know they, they, they don't have anything. You know, literally, they, they're on the streets with nothing. Sure. And so it, it kind of draws their, their empathy. And then uh, when we did the bridging campaign uh, with General Phillips, we sent in a massive amount of um, items. But one of our things that were most near to dear were items that we could give to our men and women um, on the front line when they go out there that they can continue to be generous and you give them something to give to an Iraqi child or an Afghanistan child or whatever, um, it, it kind of gives them, it, it maintains their humanistic mm -hmm. qualities that Americans have. We're generous people and so, but if you're th out there in the desert sure. and you don't have anything to give, <laughs> you know, you're kind of hand strong. Mm -hmm. Well, what we did is we kind of filled up that void and gave them things the same way as all of our outreach programs. We kind of sure. think about how many ways can we affect everybody, those contributing, those receiving, mm -hmm. and, and putting in an educational component to it. Sure. Is there anything that you'd like to deliver to our viewing audience today, a little message you'd like to send to them in regards to your organization? I, I guess on behalf of the All Veterans Memorial, I think what's really important is that we have to look at each other, we have to look at each other in our eyes, be sympathetic that the things that you don't see, not the things that you do, that there are, there are people out there in need, and our veterans specifically, because not only could they be homeless, or could, but, mm -hmm. but they've got certain uh, injuries or wounds that are so deeply hidden, and some of them don't even know themselves. Mm -hmm. When you see a Gold Star mom, that should 
that should cause people to tear because they their sons or daughters gave the ultimate sacrifice, but being a mom, mm -hmm. that is an ultimate sacrifice to lose your child. So what we have to do, I think, is take each other on individual basis. We need to look at each other and just assume. Just assume and be kind and, and take the time. Find some of the organizations that, that, are, that have results. You know, those are the ones that, you know, when you when you see them around or whatever, ask how you can help. Whether you have money to, to donate, whether you have time to donate, time is everything I think that everybody has. Mm -hmm. And or they can try to find it out. Make it a priority to do something nice to somebody every day, but to be patient with one another. Mm -hmm. I think that that's probably the most because you don't know who they are, you don't know what they've been through, and we are a wonderful country, and the who we are is worth protecting and worth preserving. And so I'm I'm honored that I had this uh, spring is my final phase, and I will be handing it off and going on to one more. So um, and in seven years I'll be celebrating 50 years of philanthropy, which this is probably my most. Uh, greatest honor to be able to do is mm -hmm. to serve those who have served, and I hope I have done it to their satisfaction. That was it. Well, Charlie, thank you for coming. We yeah, certainly appreciate it. Welcome. My pleasure. And uh, we hope that we can help you in the, in the future. I hope so, too. Okay. Thank you so much, and thank right. you for your service. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we've interviewed uh, Charlie Ehrman today from uh, All Forces Heritage Museum, and uh, thank you for watching.